Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark and you're very welcome to the channel Marky's Herps. Now in this video what I'm actually going to be doing with you guys is just giving you a little bit of a story that I found online on the ballpython.net forums by a user named Skip Loader and uh, it's a thread called Zen and the Art of Snake Maintenance and I'm going to read this story to you, okay? There's going to be footage of my snakes playing in the foreground. And then I'm going to double back on the story and talk about my personal life a little bit and how keeping snakes plays into my life and how this thread really resonated with me. So put down the controllers, stop clicking, put down your phone and have a little bit of a listen to this, okay? It's a little bit lengthy, but we'll get through it. Okay, so here we go. I grew up in a little town called Carnelian Bay. Look it up. It's on the north shore of Lake Tahoe. These were in the heady days when phones were all rotary, the, pa the pants were corduroy, the pant legs were belled, and the designer colours in most kitchens were orange and avocado formica and appliances. The internet really didn't exist until many years after I graduated from college. The street we lived on had maybe 30 houses on it, widely spaced apart and sparsely occupied. In fact, there were only eight year-round residences on our street, ours and our next-door neighbour. Our next-door neighbour was a biology professor at University of Nevada. He had a degree in herpetology and in the heady days of the 1970s one of the most impressive collections of snakes I've ever seen. He was a single man, divorced with two kids that he rarely saw. When I was about six, I took a keen interest in his hobby, snake keeping. His speciality was crotalids, but his travels and connections to South and Central America allowed him to acquire a collection of various colubrids that were unmatched. In fact, there were animals in his collection that I have not seen since. He had examples of most North American Lampropeltis and Pituophis, along with rosy and rubber boas. I spent 12 years of my life going over to his house almost every day to assist him with his husbandry duties and I never tired, tired of that group of animals. When he received a new exotic species, maybe a Drymarcon, maybe a Clelia, perhaps Pseudoboa, he would politely leave a note on the door for me when I got home from school. I always marvelled at each new and wonderful animal he introduced me to. In the 1970s, it seems, my parents were none too worried about me spending time with a single middle-aged man who lived by himself. While my parents were friendly with him, and when his daughters came to visit, they would invariably end up at our house to play with my sister, they did not know a lot about him. Maybe it was the fact that my dad worked out of the area and was gone Saturday night through Friday night, and my mom thought an adult male presence would do me good or maybe the times were different less suspicious and fearful but i spent a lot of time over there after i did my homework and my chores i was allowed to go over before dinner on my weekends i spent hours over there my time was spent assisting him with feeding cleaning measuring and weighing his animals moving snakes from qt which i assume is quarantine to the snake room setting up glass tanks, brackets, yes, glass tanks, and moving frozen lab rodents from freezer to the fridge to slowly thaw, he set me out in the woods behind our house to catch frogs and lizards for his finicky philodrius, and had me mixing cleaning solution in large yard sprayers. I swept and vacuumed both snake areas and moved pine shavings from a pallet on the side of the house to trash cans in the garage. All but the largest of snakes were kept in glass cages, light bulbs were used as heat sources, pine shavings as substrates, appropriate species were kept in pairs and inappropriate species were kept separate. In short, all sorts of husbandry don'ts were followed and religiously adhered to. Other practices were also followed. Enclosures were cleaned every week, disinfected, scrubbed and dried. Fresh substrate was put back in and animals weighed and measured, the numbers recorded. The water bowls were likewise cleaned weekly with disinfectant. New arrivals were put in the barn, 
their mouths were swabbed, they were given prophylactic parasite treatments and their forced poops were examined. There were two areas in the barn, one for arrivals in their first six months and a second for arrivals in their last six months. These two areas were separated by a wall and a door. Oftentimes colleagues would stop by the visit stop by I imagine he imagine he meant to write to visit. Oftentimes colleagues would stop by to visit my neighbour and while I cleaned and swept and kept to the husbandry routine I would hear them swap husbandry tips without judgment and without the shadow of harsh opinion dominating the discussion. Now some smart ass may ask what these rambling comments and recollections have to do with snake maintenance. Well, they have everything to do with it. Many, many years later, it became easier to share husbandry tips and build a consensus on common practices through the internet. Unfortunately, it also became easier to swap bad information and propagate baseless opinions. Experience has been easily and almost painlessly replaced by doing Google searches or, or asking for consensus on forums. Do not get me wrong, forums are wonderful things, but all of these self-imposed rules, all of the baseless and easily gained false expertise is, I believe, making many people worse keepers and taking the zen out of this hobby. The exact definition of the word husbandry does not really apply to keeping exotic pets, at least I don't think it does. We use it nonetheless. We also, and I am guilty of this, refer to snake keeping as a hobby. Both terms do disservice to what it really is. If done right, if done with the right frame of mind and if done with compassion and passion, it becomes a lifelong relationship with a group of animals. These non too intelligent animals take on personalities. Their dispositions and special habits and preferences are learned. Doing it correctly means balancing what works for you with what works for the animal. Some animals prefer shavings, some paper. Some use hides, some don't. Some like white rats, some like dark rats. Some seem to look forward to handling sessions while some remain irascible throughout their lives. Some are gentle, some seem downright possessed. When faced with a sickness or other health issue, the interaction increases more and I'll be damned if some of these dim animals seem to sense that you are trying to help them in their time of need and draw closer to you even the possessed ones. Two nights ago my big 12 pound black tail Kribo has two stuck eye caps. In 15 years of keeping him he has never had a bad shed but the AC has been running almost 24 hours in the snake house and it dries out the air. As I held his head and gently worked loose the retained caps he did not fight and did not squirm. This is an animal who strikes the front of his enclosure when anyone other than me walks in the room. I marvelled at what might mean. I marvelled at what that might mean and how this simple gesture from what many consider an unintelligent animal made me feel so honoured and special. I learned to listen to my snakes from my mentor. I learned early in my time in this hobby to balance what is easy for me with what the preference of the animal is. I learned to listen to each snake in my collection. I also learned to enjoy my time with my animals, to take pleasure in simple tasks that could really be described as chores. I feel that this hobby has transformed these chores into something akin to Zen. I am at peace when I am taking care and interacting with my animals, be it scraping crap off the walls or vacuuming the floors. For anybody taking the time to read this rambling and aimless mess, I hope that you are not too embroiled in debating whether the deserts can lay fertile eggs safely, concerned about whether a coral glow and a banana are one and the same, or about who is crashing what market, or about raining supreme judgement down on the idiot who uses pine shavings and glass cages. I hope that you find the zen in your animals and leave all the drama, judgement and pontification to the self-proclaimed experts who learned at the knee of Apple or Intel. I hope that you learn to find your own way in this hobby while finding what makes your snakes healthy and content. Okay guys, by by no admission that was a long old post, um, but you know, I stopped what I was doing 
and I read that post from beginning to end on my own time and that is rare for me to be honest in this day and age and that nearly ties in to the whole angle of that post it's the fact that everyone is so tied up in their lives that they don't take joy in the simple things they don't stop and smell the roses they don't stop to take pleasure in just living in the moment and i find that when i'm with my snakes personally and i'm sure someone else watching this video must feel that when they're working with animals if you have a feeding day yes sometimes feeding days can be frustrating but feeding day water changing day spot cleaning day all of these days where you're involved with your animals and working i just go into a, a zen like zone i just zone out and you know it's all about the animals for that 15 minutes of the day it's just about doing what is right for them and maintaining them it could just mean scrubbing fucking uh water dishes for 10 minutes I know for that 10 minutes my hands are occupied, my brain is occupied, my eyes are occupied and it's doing something constructive. You're nurturing something, it feels like you are giving something uh, life, energy, uh, you're pouring it into something that you see results in immediately. If you've ever had the pleasure or privilege to change a snake's water and put the bowl in and see them go towards it because they can smell the fresh water they go towards it and they, you see them drink you watch them drink that is a reward as a snake keeper you know um th when you figure out something to do with your husbandry as that person rightly puts husbandry in inverted commas when you figure out something with your husbandry and suddenly your snake seems more relaxed that is so rewarding and something that i don't really talk about too much is about my personal life is um i kind of can suffer with depression and um, you know i think once as you suffer with depression you're pretty much you're pretty much gonna suffer with it for your life and um, basically back in january i had a big fucking blowout and uh, it was kind of a destructive relationship coupled with big health worries that were very very irrational but really took hold and i i'm fully convinced i took some kind of mini fucking nervous breakdown to be honest with you but um yeah like you think you're in a dark place but when you hit rock bottom you you'll know about it basically but i got into snake keeping around that time and uh, it really fucking helped S someone after that guy after that guy posted that thread someone replied commenting that it's a little bit like bonsai that bonsai is kind of a zen art form you're pruning this tree you're maintaining this tree with the ideas of nurturing it and watching it grow and that's exactly how i feel about the snakes and um, there's nothing more satisfying than taking out a snake and actually visibly seeing it a change in it it could be after a shed it could be after maybe a week or two where you haven't given it much handling time it could be after a particular uh, set of heavy feeds that the snake has taken a growth sport it could be anything but there is a zen like reward in caring for these animals and i didn't think that many other people experienced it i thought that it was actually just because i was in a state of depression that this was this was kind of an escape for me i didn't think other people would have felt that as well and you know i i haven't weighed them as much lately but i weigh my animals occasionally i spot clean religiously i change the water whenever it gets dirty I feed on it on a kind of a strict enough regime and you know part of it is for the animal and as that guy said it's 50 50 trying to find what works for the animal and trying to find what works for you and I think to be honest with you like these snakes I owe more to them than they could ever owe to me for me taking care of them and um, 
they're just magnificent animals and you know you you can't sing their praises enough anyone that keeps any animals you know i wouldn't be keeping any kind of arachnids but you know if if someone gets that same buzz from arachnid keeping then more power to them and i would fully endorse their keeping of arachnids or whatever guinea pigs gerbils whatever the fuck man but um yeah like a lot of a lot of parallels i found in myself in that post like that line where he says make sure like it's 50 50 easy for you easy for the animal i hammer that home to myself all the time if something's not working for me or if something is becoming a chore i have to step back and put it back into a zen like state i have to synchronize synchronization and timekeeping a calendar is actually your most powerful tool as a snake keeper i'm telling you now if you put an easy to follow system in place you're you're gonna reap so much more from this hobby i'm telling you now man if you synchronize up all your snakes like yes some people might think my young corn snake should be eating every six days and some people might think my older corn snake should be eating every nine days but if i want to make it easier on me and increase my longevity of interest in the hobby i should synchronize them up and that could mean feeding the adult a slightly smaller meal and the uh, small one a slightly bigger meal and again as that guy says some people out there are going to recoil at that statement i just made and they're going to um try and bash it but uh, that's my choice that's that's my that's my choice as a snake keeper as a pet keeper and as a uh, a hobbyist and carer for these animals um that's my choice and you can deride it all you like and you know after a while of getting on forums and shit you're used to having your comments derided but you can deride it all you like it's not going to stop me doing it and it's not going to benefit you in any way to deride my statements now don't get me wrong if i'm starving the animal that's a different uh kettle of fish or if i'm overfeeding an animal chime in uh, if i'm doing something very disastrous but if i'm doing this with relative knowledge and uh brackets a certain degree of expertise behind my belt i'm well entitled to to carry out as i wish um there's another got there, there was another scenario where i i keep my corn snake on lignocell and i was keeping my new pine snake on lignocell in plastic tubs and uh, and i took a picture of the setups because i have a sick pine snake at the moment and people fucking pounced on me for having lignocell on plastic and the heat mat underneath the plastic tub like nearly everyone fucking anyone serious in the hobby keeps most of their animals in tubs nowadays and people just dived on me on uh, the facebook group pituofa's facebook group to be exact but uh, again that they're they're not in any any uh position to deride my my uh husbandry techniques they're entitled to their opinion but as this guy says we're calling it a hobby and it's not really a hobby it's a lifetime i would call it personally a lifetime scientific learning bonding experience with some amazing exotic animals that we otherwise would not have the opportunity to enjoy if it wasn't for modern technology i look at it like a continuous growing experience the snake is always growing and you're always growing as a keeper it's not just a hobby it is a lifestyle and the zen the zen is very hard to find you need to find hand-picked friends in the hobby or you're gonna get torn off it very quickly i've one or two close people that i chat to that um i trust their opinion because they don't force it down my neck basically and it's as simple as that but anyway guys if you want to look up that post for yourself and draw your own uh similarities 
from it. It is called Zen and the Art of Snake Maintenance, loosely based on the philo- philosophy book Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. I've never read that book, but I assume it's based on the same kind of thing where you can find peace in the art of something mundane or what some people would perceive as being mundane and it's in that same vein anyway anyway guys this is me mark i might post this to my main channel just to bring a little bit of attention back to my secondary marky serps channel take it handy if you have it handy remember and take it twice good luck